Hey guys, it's Sandy. So I want to get on here and talk because it's been a while. I've been traveling, haven't been around for a while, but now I'm back and I want to share some things. Um, I wanted to specifically share this because I've got a personal story with it about AI and jobs, where they're going to be in the future. And I also have to share with you an interview that I listened to. It was Elon Musk and he was at the World Summit. This was just a few weeks ago. He was at the World Summit and they did like a Zoom call kind of interview with him. And it was wow <laughs> you know where ai is going to be in the future so many of you on here are so much versed um way more versed in what ai is than i am i'm just learning even more about it but i what i do know is that a lot of people do not know how far advanced it is and where it is for the future and that's why i wanted to share because i didn't and then when i started learning about it because of a personal story i was like wow okay it is really moving quickly. So I started this video off in the kitchen, but it's the day after Thanksgiving and everybody was coming in. So now I'm up here in my bonus room up here um, in my workout room. So I wanted to talk to you about this because it's serious and this is basically a where, we, where are we gonna be in the future? Let me just tell you that, um, so my broker and a couple of my brokers, they went to a meeting and it was a big meeting for all these brokers and they brought in a speaker and then they came back and was telling us the information that they learned because basically what it was said is if you are not uh, doing AI, then you're going to be left in the dust. And so how to work that in the real estate world, because that's what I'm doing right now. I've had many different jobs uh, in my life, or not many, but different jobs in my life. And this is what I'm doing at this moment. And this is why I'm telling you this, because I think that most everybody thinks, oh, yeah, but they couldn't take my job. Um, my job's, uh, I've, I've got that human contact. You couldn't take my job, except maybe they can. There are gonna be some jobs that they cannot take, that AI cannot take, but I think there's gonna be a lot more that we don't realize that um, AI is gonna do. In this meeting, the speaker said that 40% of the workforce in the next five years will be gone because of AI, that AI will take the jobs. So, they they told us a lot more i gotta tell you some of this stuff i might even have to break it into two videos because there's so much that i was just like oh my gosh i mean just my mouth was hanging open for part of this and that's why i don't think everybody knows where how how fast ai is moving and so you know i think about the thing about ai is it can be used for good but it also can be used for bad and i don't think it's all bad um definitely but it can be used for bad that, that's for sure. I, the thing that bothers me about it is what's going to be truth? And how are we going to know? We can't even, we won't be able to decipher what is real and what's not real. So whenever this speaker said that 40% of the workforce would be gone in the next five years, it'd be taken over by AI, AI, I did some research. I found this other video. I got millions of views and I listened to this guy, but this video was one year old. And he said that 25% of the workforce would be gone within the next five years. One year later, this other speaker is saying that 40% of the workforce would be gone. Who's right? I don't know. But what I do know is that we all think our jobs are indispensable and that's not true. So specifically, um, I'm going to tell you what happened to me and what made me open my eyes and go, oh, wow okay <laughs> hang on tight because the future is going to be a little crazy um but first i want to tell you very quickly these these stats that elon musk said because i just listened to this elon musk interview so two weeks ago at the world summit he was being interviewed on a zoom call and the guy interviewing him um was ask, asking him some questions and his answers were very eye-opening as far as how quickly things are moving. And he was talking about um, Teslas. So let's talk about the cars, about Mars, and then about humanoids, what he was talking about them. So with the Teslas, he said that in 2025, next year, Thanksgiving was just yesterday, so we're at the end of 2024. So in 2025, that cars will be driving unsupervised, and they're going to start in California and Texas. Now we already know that self-driving unsupervised cars has you know, been a thing. They haven't really done that well, but technology has gotten a lot better and will continue to get better. And by next year, they're gonna roll these out. So there's gonna be unsupervised um, driving taxis and cars and whatever. But this was the crazy thing 
is he also said that production will begin in 2026 on cars with no steering wheels and no pedals because they'll be driving unsupervised or they'll, you know, you're, you'll just get in and it will drive you where you need to go. 2026. That is not that far away. You guys, we're almost to 2025. So just keep that in mind how quickly that things will, a uh, self-driving car will be here. Um, now, will it take a little while for everybody to move over to that? Yes. But what I'm saying is production is already going to begin and things are moving very quickly in this world. And what he was saying, it's just software updates as far as the cars with steering wheels and pedals, they're software updates to drive them unsupervised. But then they're going to be making these other cars. And then the, um, the interviewer asked him about humanoids. Now, humanoids are the robots, the human robots, you know, that look like people. So not like some R2D2, but actually, um, you know, has a head, has arms, has legs. I don't know if you've seen those. Um, there are videos of that. Optimus is what it's called. And he was saying in the video, now, I don't know if there's only one Optimus has come out or two, but he was even mentioned Optimus three. So I know in 2025 that the speaker that I was talking about to the brokers was saying that in 2025, the next Optimus is going to come out and it's even more advanced. But um, I don't know if that's the two version or the three version. So some of you might know that. But you know that this new robot, um, the way that it's being marketed is that it can mow your lawn, it can do your dishes, it can babysit your kids, it can teach your kids, it can be your friend, it can be your girlfriend, your boyfriend. You know, um, that's, that's freaky. It just is. But what he said is this interview asked him, and by 2040, remember in, we're in almost 2025, by 2040, where will we be with our, as far as humanoids? And then how much are the humanoids going to cost? Well, so he thought a little bit and he was, you know, like this and thinking, and, and he said by 2040, he said, so that's a ways away, 2040. This is Elon Musk talking. That's a ways away, 2040. But by 2040, there will be more humanoids in the world than there are people. Now, before that, he was just talking about the dropping population of the world because people are not having children as much. And, and that is actually a problem. You know, Russia, China, like they're, they are finding their populations and all over the world in different countries, population is dropping because people are not having children the way that they used to. So we, he did mention dropping population before that. And then he said that there will be more humanoids. So these robots, human robots, there'll be more humanoids in the world than there are people by 2040. And then the interviewer asked him about Mars. And he said that within two years that um, we will be on Mars. And within two years after that, that people will be able to be on Mars. So before the end of this decade, they're already talking about being on Mars. And I, I say all this to you because I don't believe that just your regular people realize how quickly AI is advancing. In the um, meeting that I was telling you about that the speaker was in, um, that my brokers went to, he said, I will also, like he told all about the future of where we are right now and what we can do with AI and said, but within three months, what I'm telling you right now will be gone because it will have advanced so much further in three months that you're going to have to keep up with a new advancing of AI. And then something else he said is, do you know that within 10 seconds, that if you're on AI and you are talking to AI and it talks, it hears your voice, sees your face, within 10 seconds, it will learn you and it can mimic you. And, um, and then um, they were saying that it, as you talk to it more, it gets to know you. So it gets to know your personality and your dialect and, you know, how you are. So it even sounds and looks even more like you. And that right there scares me because I was like, well, then how are you going to know what's truth? What is true and what isn't true? There will be so much fake news and fake this and fake that because we won't know what is truth. Um, you might see somebody and they're saying this certain thing and it might not be, it might be AI generated completely. So when I say it can be used for good things and bad things, that's what I mean. As far as the good things, I'm not sure what they are, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I'm sure there are good things and there's advancements probably in medicine, like advancements in medicine and helping people. But what it is not good for is it can do things so quickly 
so we don't even have to use our creative brains anymore. Um, you know, as far as writing stories, or you tell it to draw a picture and it can draw a beautiful picture in no time. Or um, one of the, the people in our office, they made a brochure and they made that brochure within, he said 10 minutes because he didn't know what he was doing even. And the brochure showed me and I was like, that is beautiful. That would take somebody a long time to make. And you made that in 10 minutes. And because it's, you really didn't totally know what you were doing either. And so I wanted to try it um, because if I'm going to talk about it, then I at least wanted to try it. So I'd never been on chat GPT. My, my son had and stuff and he'd tell me, you know, it's easy, mom, just try it. So I got on because I wanted to write. I had a couple houses to list and I wanted to write some descriptions. Um, and that is always the part that takes the longest because you have to have some flowy words to make it sound good. And so what I did is I just got on, I typed in a few parameters as far as um, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, how many acres, you know, those kind of things. Put in a few uh, uh, main things about the house and it, within seconds, I had paragraphs that I was able to use. I just had to go in, cut and paste some places. And I was like, wow, that just took my time that I would have been spending down to nothing. And that's where AI is gonna take over jobs because it can write stories, it can write books, it can write, uh, make pictures, it can do computer programming. Another thing that it does not do, and it's only gonna get better. So all the people that say, oh, but you can tell what is AI and what isn't, I think that that was true. You know, people had eight fingers and stuff. <laughs> you know, you knew that was AI generated pictures and that kind of thing. But it's only going to get so much better that we're not going to be able to tell what is true and what's not true after a while. And then the other thing is, and I said this, I said, but if we don't have to use our brains, because you get on search engines, you type in whatever, and it tells you immediately, you don't have to do math, you don't have to look things up. And you know, it can just tell you your answers immediately. But also if it can write your story for you immediately, a short story, a long story, if it can draw pictures for you, if it can write descriptions without having to think of it out my, on my own, then what happens to our creative brains? You know, I, I said, I'm not a real creative person. Um, some people are real artsy fartsy and you know, they can do that, but I still have to use my brain for other things just because I, I'm not super creative, like artsy creative. But why do we have to use our brains? Why will our kids and our grandkids really have to use any creative thinking? Because everything can be right at their fingertips. And that's whenever it gets scary because um, that's not the way God created us. So that takes away the human, the human part of it. And, you know, um, Trump is in, and I think so many people, um, are, you know, are, are glad, I'm glad that he's in, but I think that we're kind of like, oh, good, now we're all good and everything's going to be fine. A lot of people, you know, are like that, but I do hope that our economy and things all get better. But as far as the future, um, I think, you know, the future of God, Bible prophecy is still moving along. And AI is part of that. I truly, truly believe it is. And it's moving so quickly that we still have to keep our eyes and ears open to what's going on. Try to discern what is true and what is not true. Pictures, people talking, you know, try to discern that. And the only way to do that is to have a relationship with the Lord and be praying so that you can discern those kind of things. But you got to keep your eyes open and ears open. And um, where I thought that my job, oh, my job's always gonna be good because you have to have that personal connection. Actually, I found out that AI is already in the market that I'm in. And at some point there won't be a need. And so um, you can argue that fact of whatever job you're in and they can't take every job because there's some jobs. I mean, wh what about skilled jobs, plumbers and electricians and, um, you know, whatever else, heating and cooling people, can a robot do all that, a uh, humanoid? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I think not that you need that human connection, nurses, but I don't know exactly where the future is with all of that. Um, but whether it's going to be 25% of the workforce or 40% of the workforce, that's a lot of people. And then what? People are just going to be on welfare because they don't have work. It's, it's it, as far as the, it can be used for good and bad. Yeah, I don't know. So um, just wanted to kind of pop this out here and see if anybody else realizes how 
how fast technology is moving. And then let me know in the comments, do you think it's for good or for bad? Um, I think it can be for both, but there's some scary stuff with it. But you know, when I say that, don't be scared. Like, listen, I'm not here trying to scare you. I'm trying to just keep you aware of things. I'm not scared. There's some scary components with it that can happen, but I'm not scared because I've got the Lord. So I'm not scared. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to share it. Eager to hear from you. And you're going to see a lot more of me because I'm back and now I'm ready to get back on and uh, uh, see all my YouTube friends. <laughs> all right, you guys, that's all I have for now. Until next time, I'm out.